Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today, Creating Grafana Dashboard for Palo Alto Network's Firewalls. My name is Ulrika Default Menares. I'll be your speaker and host for today's webinar. Before we get started, let me just go over a few housekeeping items. Anytime during the webinar, if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A button to submit them. We'll be answering your questions towards the end of our session. We'll be sending out the recording along with the presentation shortly after the webinar. If you need help during the session, use the Q&A button. I will remind myself um, to keep my eyes open for questions coming in throughout the session. A little bit about myself. I started my career as a network engineer. I spent many years building networks. From IT, I moved to software engineering. Spent a good chunk of my career building layer two and routing technologies. Eventually, I ended up in product management. I joined in Denny five years ago. I'm responsible for the product. Agenda for today, I want to start off by um, doing a little bit of level setting, talk about what Grafana is and uh, why do you even want to use Grafana. We'll take a look at how the integration works at a high level, then we'll go right to the demo. I also want to pop the hood um, just so that you can see how it works behind the scene to a point that you will feel comfortable doing some level of customization. Then we'll look at uh, a short term roadmap, what you can expect to see in the next um, two quarters. And we'll wrap up with the Q&A. So what is Grafana? According to Grafana Labs, um, Grafana is an open source visualization and analytics software. It is actually quite popular um, among enterprises, just from talking to some of my customers. According to Grafana Labs, they have approximately 800,000 active installations today. The way I like to think about um, Grafana is, it really is a great way to turn your time series data into beautiful graphs. Why Grafana? Today, we collect uh, close to 180 unique metrics from your Palo Alto Networks firewall. We collect these metrics 24 by seven. Some of them uh, we collect every hour, some of them every 15 minutes, the intervals vary. Some of the metrics we collect are as frequent as every minute. If you multiply the number of metrics, uh, by the number of devices, you can easily get to millions of data points a day. That's clearly uh, quite a bit of data to digest. Now, we humans are very visual. We understand visual information much faster than any form of information. We like pictures and uh, we like graphs. So using a data visualization tool to make some sense out of all these data points, it's a no-brainer. So we um, started our journey a few years ago with the custom reporting feature. Some of you may actually remember that. At the time, uh, we, we told ourselves, hey, let's just build as many graphs as possible. Meanwhile, uh, we continue to develop new automation scripts and therefore more new metrics. We quickly realized that we weren't able to build widgets fast enough. We simply couldn't keep up with the rates of building automation scripts. Then we started asking ourselves a different question. Do we even have to build every single widget? Can we leverage external graphing tools? That actually led us down the integration path. And then we said to ourselves, hey, um, why don't we just feed all our data to as many data visualization tools as possible? For example, we released our Indenic Grafana plugin a couple of years ago. However, there was no adoption. 
in reality, getting the data to a graphing tool is just um, a starting point. The bulk of the work is actually building the widget. That is the most uh, time consuming part of the job. And that is how we ended up with a hybrid approach. Let us get all the data into Grafana and we will do the heavy lifting. We will build every single widget for you, which is what got us here today. Now, there's another great side effect with uh, Grafana. Grafana supports countless data source out of the box. You can have a widget with multiple queries, each from a different data source, and it doesn't even have to be from Indeni. What that means is having a single pane of glass can actually be a reality. Let's have a look at how the integration works at a high level. Today, Indeni uses a combination of API, CLI commands, um, MIPS, um, syslog to wrap as many metrics as possible from your device. Uh, we then store these metrics in our in-memory time series database. Um, we also have a JSON-based API that allows you to query pretty much every metric from our database. The integration uses the JSON API plugin. This plugin is actually an, another open source uh, supported natively by Grafana. In a nutshell, Grafana sends queries against the Indeni server using our um, API in the backend. The Indeni server responds to the queries with a JSON document. We then use popular query languages uh, such as JSON Path or JSON Nader to extract the data into Grafana data frames. Actually, this would be a really good point, a uh, good time um, to actually show you how the um, how the integration works and what the setup looks like. So let me just switch. Okay. Now, first thing you need is to stand up a Grafana instance. Once you have it, go ahead and log on to the portal and head over to configuration data sources. Here's where you'll be configuring um, the JSON API plugin. Now, since the, uh, the setup is really straightforward and it's well-documented in the interest of time, I'm just gonna point out a couple of important items. So yeah, this is the uh, JSON API plugin and you want to name it in Danny dash API V2. That's very important. At your um, in Danny server API endpoint here and provide the credentials. In this case, it's the certificate. If you happen to be using um, a self-signed certificate, go ahead and enable skip TLS verify button here. That way, uh, Grafana will not attempt to verify the certificate. And then add a couple of uh, custom HTTP headers, and that's pretty much all you need to do the configuration. Once you uh, have it configured, go to our repository Bitbucket and uh, pick the uh, device you want, Palo Alto Networks, and download the dashboard JSON files. Once you have it downloaded, um, you, you then simply import it into your Grafana instance. Once you do that, you will have yourself a dashboard that looks something like this. Okay, now, first thing you will notice is the device variable here. Variable is a way to find the JSON, JSON file that you just imported into your environment. This is how we can share our dashboard with you out of the box. And um, it would just go ahead and retrieve the list of devices in your environment. And in my case, I only have two uh, firewalls. Now, um, Grafana uses a concept called role, and I sometimes call it, you know, I actually like to refer them as tabs. Let me go ahead and expand a couple of these. 
you know, this is really a great way uh, to group a bunch of panels together that makes sense. You know, if, uh, for example, here, our overview tab consists of information of um, basic information about the, conf um, the configuration, what, serve, you know, what NTP DNS service is using. And every one of these widgets actually has a query uh, behind, behind it. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Your system tab has information about system resources, CPU usage, uh, memory usage, disk usage, et cetera. And here um, it's getting more interesting because now you see time series graphs. And, you, and when you mouse over to these points, you can actually see the actual timestamp and the value. Actually, it's more interesting to look at memory usage. You can actually see um, the value and the corresponding timestamps. Now notice that as I mouse over, um, the timestamp actually increments by a minute. So what that means is this particular metric, we, um, we get it um, every minute. Now, if this was a hot uh, hardware, um, you would also get additional information about various hardware, uh, hardware element status, uh, power supply, temperature sensor information. Notice rate status here. This metric is actually being collected. Uh, looks like it's every 10 minutes. Let's take a look at the network tab. The network tab consists of information about the uh, current connections against the limit, um, connections rate, information about MAC entries, as well as op table entries. Normally you would expect a long list of IP addresses and MAC addresses, and you can even search for a particular address here. The network interfaces tab has information about all your interfaces, um, the admin state and the actual state. It also has information about the throughput um, in both directions, and then all sorts of error count, along with um, additional information about the actual interfaces, packet drop counters, and packet buffer average. Notice that as I was expanding these um, uh, panels, I mean, uh, these um, tabs, um, what I found it was actually pulling data um, behind, the, behind the scene, querying the Indeni server. The next one is um, high availability. This has great information about the state of your cluster, um, whether the configuration was synchronized, state of the, uh, the cluster, as well as the role of the device, whether this is active, and in this case, this particular device is passive. Routing information has all kinds of information about routes usage, limit static routes, BGP peer state, VPN um, tab has information about all your tunnels, various errors, information. Next one up is SSL decryption, one of my favorites. It has um, the current count for SSL decryption against the limit information about uh, SSL decryption memory usage, as well as error count. Services has information about LogDB usage, uh, various logging status, um, state of your NTP server, as well as LDAP servers. And the specific services are also pretty interesting. It, it shows you the state of uh, your antivirus updates, URL filtering, whether you're connected to wildfire, uh, wildfire, uh, wildfire cloud. And it also has information about EDL. The last one is maintenance, which has information about license elements limits as well as certificates in expiration. And that is your Palo Alto network uh, firewall dashboard. Next, I want to kind of pop the hood a little bit, show you, you know, ways that you can customize some of the, the layouts. 
so we we're talking about um, these tabs is a great way to do you know to group metrics together now if you don't like our grouping by all means um, go and add to your own um, tab and you can once you have it name it to whatever you that makes sense in your environment and you can start moving these widgets into the new um, new tab next thing i want to show you is um, the global level dashboard setting um, you can change the name obviously of your dashboard um, you can change time zone but the one that i really want to show you is uh, variables You saw the variable, the device variable, allowing you to select uh, the device uh, in your environment. And I also mentioned that with any, when you were defining your data source, you wanna make sure that you don't change the name because it is a variable that we use to bind to your Grafana instance, this particular name here. So don't change these. Okay, let's uh, look at the actual panel let's pick a really simple one and let's pick OS version so um, here the actual query that we are sending I mean Grafana is sending to the uh, Indeni server and we are looking for a metric named surprise surprise OS dash version fields here is the query expression. This is how Grafana is going to extrapolate the data from the, uh, uh, from the JSON document it gets back from the Indeni server and then puts it into a data frame. And if you want to look at what that data frame looks like, you can turn the table view on. And in this case, it's just um, the string 10.0.0, not terribly interesting. So let's look at another one that's more interesting. Yeah, let's do memory usage. That looks like it's a good one to look at. Okay, so um, in this case, let's look at the query. We're looking for a different metric, memory dash usage. And the query expression is a lot more interesting. We are actually grabbing a bunch of uh, data points, like the actual value, the, the points here, along with the uh, timestamps. And then tag is literally these names here. Now, if you look at, uh, wanna look at the, the data frames, what that looks like is, um, here's the timestamp, some of them has no value. And then you can look at another tag. Let's take a look at dynamic IP port not pool. Again, some with no value, the actual value and the corresponding timestamps. Let's put, let's get the, uh, the graph view. Now, over on the right hand side, there's a whole slew of options for you to customize the layout of the panel. Uh, first of all, if you don't like time graphs, um, you can select a different one with just a click of a button. You know, let's look at prefer gauge for memory usage as an example. You can obviously change the title, uh, you can change the legend uh, where you want to put it. You can turn on and off uh, whether you want two tips, uh, whether you want to enable um, annotation or change colors. There's all kinds of things that you can customize um, and it won't break anything. Now, so far we looked at two panels. Each one of them has just a single query. So some of the panels actually has multiple queries and I'm going to show you one of them. Yeah, let's put cluster state. Okay, notice this particular panel has three queries. Let's take a look at the first query. We're looking for a metric called cluster dash config dash synced. And the second query, we're looking for the metric named cluster state. The third query, we are looking for cluster member active. Now, each one of these query has this corresponding query expression. That's how Kofana know what 
you know, what to extrapolate and draw this particular chart. And that is pretty much all I want to show you um, from a demo perspective. Let us return to the slides. Okay, let's take a look at the roadmap. Uh, what's next? What you can expect in the next uh, couple of quarters. So we're working on a composite dashboard that actually has all the devices in your environment. Think of it as like a, a system view, um, help you draw your attention, which particular device you want to have a deeper, um, deeper visibility and pull up the, uh, the, the, the device view. We also uh, have a compliance dashboard. In fact, let me see what time. Okay. So I can actually give you a preview. So with Palo Alto Networks Firewall, we have approximately, I think, 40 to 50 compliance checks um, for CIS benchmark. And I'll show that to you in just a minute. Um, we are also working on device uh, dashboard for Panorama, Checkpoint Management Server, VSX, um, as well as other device, um, devices. Now, at the minute, uh, we are pulling data from our in-memory uh, time series database. We also have a long-term database. So we, um, at some point, we will also grab data from our long-term database, so that way you can do more uh, custom reporting. All right, let's see if there are any questions. Okay, looks like there are a couple of questions. The first one is, can you use Grafana to create a dashboard to create a compliance report with a list of the latest vulnerabilities from Palo Alto network security um, advisories? This is a really great question. So. Um, in fact, we were just bouncing around internally with this exact idea. Um, in theory, we could subscribe to the advisory service. Uh, we can then construct a Grafana query to retrieve the list of vulnerabilities uh, from their backend API. Um, say we, we do that every day. Um, because we already have the inventory information about all your devices, all that's really needed is a you know, some simple logic to kind of stitch them together. So the short answer is we think it can be done, perhaps a, um, a future enhancement. Thank you for that. The next question is, do you use SNMP to export all metrics from each firewall? Okay. Yeah, today um, in Danny actually pulls metric using a combination API, um, SNMP, um, SS, um, I mean SSH, we um, run CLI commands as well as syslog. And then we store that in, the, in, the, um, in our own database. But from a Grafana perspective, we use the API to grab all that data from our database. So Grafana doesn't you know, actually touch the device itself. And that is pretty much all the questions. Let me just wrap up. So a couple of resources here that I want to highlight if you're new to Indeni. Um, this white paper, it's a pretty good read. And then there's also a link uh, to the documentation, what it takes to set up you know, the environment, as well as link to our repository. Now, if you are thinking of building your own widgets, then the, uh, check out this blog post. It actually goes a lot deeper. It has a lot of information about the actual data structure. Um, so have a read. And uh, that concludes our webinar. Thank you for joining me.